Brian Powell of I Run Far here with Mike Foote after yet another great run at UTMB. Thank you. Um, it's odd because you're probably going to say it's not the run you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was, in the end, I, I feel like I was really happy with my time for this course. Uh, not to mention being among ten, the top ten at UTMB any year is something anybody should be proud of, no matter what your expectations are. Or gender, in uh, this case. Exactly, or gender, good point. Uh, no, it's, it, was, it was a really uh, positive experience. There were definitely some highs and lows. Uh, the first couple hours were really odd. I felt just completely flushed out and horrible, and like I have at the end of 100 mile races before. Um, I don't know if I was working through something or felt like I was getting the flu. And then uh, luckily I made it to Lake Contamine and everything turned around. Whatever was I was dealing with was... Yeah, you weren't looking too good. Yeah. There. Oh yeah, I felt pale. I was sweating pr profusely. I went to switch into my long sleeve t-shirt and I had sweat through everything in my backpack. So I had to switch all of my gear out. <laughs> um, I've never experienced anything like it in my life, but again, luckily after 30 kilometers, I felt normal again and was able to start playing some catch up, which is fine by me. I like being in that role anyways. Yeah. Um, how, what does motivate you about that? Is it, uh, you know, it, it keeps you a little hungry early on in the race, not feeling like you're being chased. Mm -hmm. um, I think I gain confidence from passing people. And uh, this, this race was a perfect example of everybody I passed. The next person was a little bit harder to pass because they were moving a little bit faster. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, bit by bit, it was, it was fun to kind of work my way back in the top 10. I think I was probably in 40th or 50th in St. Gervais, which is kind of right where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. and, even though I was feeling pretty bad, but as always, I have a lot of time to catch up in a race like UTMB. So. Early on uh, in Les Ouches, you were with, I mean, a bunch of other Americans, and, and your opinion, Jez, I think, was in your group, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and Tony Wolf, and, Wolf and Tony, and, and Amy Sproston. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, were you guys, especially on the men's side, talking at all about, like, trying to tempt, like, were you reinforcing that on one another to sort of chill out? You know, we didn't talk about it, but you could just tell we were all trying to take it really easy. The hard part was I was working really hard <laughs> because for whatever reason I, I felt horrible, but you could tell we were all ringing ourselves in and just, you know, I think, I think we all said that was going to be our plan and yeah. we were all kind of keeping each other in check to see if everybody was actually going to stick to that plan. Wouldn't it have been hard if like one of them had taken it? Like, absolutely. Like, yeah, absolutely. It's always funny to say, I'm going to race my own race, I'm going to race my own race, and you see somebody who you want to be racing with take off. Yeah, Jez takes off and you're like, okay. Yeah, we only have 145 kilometers to go. Yeah. <laughs> I have to go right now. Only 20 hours left. <laughs> um, when you, there's obviously a lot of European runners that you don't know. You're, yeah. at, you're, you're in 50th, there's a lot of people, you just, the random bodies and yeah. you like your life. Absolutely. You're like, okay. When, do you start, when did you start feeling yourself back in the race? Barely. Uh, I'd say, you know, coming into Cormier, I was probably in 10th place, but kind of a ways out from everybody mm -hmm. still. And uh, I knew I had a lot of work to do between Cormier and Champelac. And uh, I, I could start seeing headlamps in the distance and felt like I was moving at an okay pace mm -hmm. and hitting splits all right. Uh, again, on to Grand Col Ferre, which is the high point of the course. And knowing I had a 20 kilometer downhill into Champelac, I really wanted to make up some time. And uh, in, in Champaign, I ran into Timmy Olson, who was in fifth or sixth at the time. And it was great working with him. I mean, we were racing, uh, you know, for a good 30K and put, you know, I was pushing him on the climbs and I was trying to keep up on the descents. And uh, we worked together all, all the way into Ballarcine, essentially, which was probably good for both of us for yeah. the latter third of our race. Um, so that was really helpful to help bring us into uh, contention with Julian, who was in fourth or fifth, fourth at that time. Uh, I think it, we brought ourselves into that position to catch him on that last climb, which was great. Now, were you guys just racing one against one each other, or were you actually like working together to some degree? Yeah, it was a little bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we got to the top of the climb above uh, up before you go into Balor scene, and you know, we were just we settled in with each other finally, and uh, you know, we're chatting for quite a while, and Timmy was hurting. And I was certain, but we were working hard and it was great. And, you know, we were, we were excited to go catch people together, which was awesome. I think that really helped. And we thought Miguel Haras was in front of us just from random things we had heard on the trail. And it ended up being Julian. And uh, again, yeah, we were, I mean, we were both competing, but also knowing that working, working together was going to help both of us get to the finish line a little faster. Absolutely. Gotcha. Um, did you have, once you got yourself back together after the Quantum Mean, yeah. did you have any major, other major low points during the race? Um, no, not really. You know, the last point, the, the lowest point on the race for me was 
uh, coming into the La Flagere aid station, the last aid station, I, in, in hopes to catch Julian, uh, skimped on getting enough calories and water in Valorcine. And uh, that climb, that last climb is brutal and long, and it was getting hot that day, you know, and, or yesterday. And uh, I, I made it into the La Flagere aid station and uh, just stood there and was kind of wobbly on my two feet. And I was just, I ran out of water about mm -hmm. 30, 45 minutes before. And uh, it wasn't the point in the race where I needed to be doing that. Um, you know, only five, 10K to go. And so I actually took an extra couple minutes in the last aid station just to get my wits about me, get a lot of water and calories on board. And then I was able to have a, you know, decent descent. But my actual, one of my worst splits the entire race. Were did you catch him month. before La Flagere then? I did, oh yeah, I caught him halfway up the climb, but I was, I didn't want to leave it to chance. So I took some chances in Valor C mm -hmm. by skimping on my time in that aid station. And, uh, was it just I, I having Julian ahead of you, or was it also? I mean, Tim left. It was a little about bit a minute. Of oh yeah, he was walking. <laughs> we, we 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 both patted each other on the butt when he was walking out, and I was walking in. I mean, we were we were going for it, but that's you know. So you're in Valorcin. You know, it's Tim. You don't know how do you know how far ahead Tim is? I mean, Valorcin up at La Flagere. Oh, and he he gained a lot on me because I was hurt. So were last you? Time. Did you sort of switch modes into hold Julian up mode? Oh yeah, by the time I made it to La Flagere, it was holding Julian off mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim and I were working together for a good chunk, but by then I knew I wasn't going to catch him, which is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, did it feel a little different to to not last year? You were you were racing that last ten k. You had like an amazing finish. Yeah. Um, does that cloud your perspective on the the day at all? Just not having just that last small little portion at the end because you were making so much great progress from. Yeah. yeah, 20 miles to Yeah, it definitely 100. does. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. The first thing I thought about when I woke up this morning was where I could improve upon and, you know, that part of the race maybe maybe settling in a little too much and making good moves throughout the middle mm -hmm. to put myself in contention and then maybe not taking, taking advantage of that last 15K as much as I'd like. So in the end, I'm definitely excited about my performance, but wouldn't have minded having that beast mode in the last 15k like to me had yeah which i and which is similar to what i did last year yeah. you know that feeling of just charging all the way into the finish you know it's it's a mental game it's a physical game needing to be there at the right time to be able to finish that strong so yeah well with that you know you were third last year right and fifth this year mm -hmm. hungry to come back and get another <laughs> you know it's funny i, I was like as long as i do the full UTMB course, I'm going to take a break. And now immediately, I now that I've run the full UT, UTMB course, I, can, I can't help but think about picking it apart. And now that I have that experience and like where I can improve upon in each part of the race, and it's, it's hard not to come back. We'll see though, there's so many great opportunities. There are, but this one's becoming special to you. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, for a good reason. I mean, it's, a, it's an incredible experience. Nice, well congratulations. Thanks, Brian. Great seeing you again. Yeah, absolutely. All right, you know what's coming. <laughs> this might be the last interview of uh, UTMB. Um, the bonus question, what's it like being on the stage? <laughs> <laughs> the prize giving stage in Chamonix after UTMB. Well, the first time I was here, I was 11, so I was one off from being on the stage. Yeah, because it's the top 10 men and top 10 women. And uh, This year, or last year, it was, it was great. I mean, it's a pretty neat experience. Every award's unique to that place mm -hmm. um, and it's made from it's made by an artist here in the Shawnee Valley and uh, there's thousands of people you know staring up at you and it's a it's pretty neat it's, it more than looking out the audience it's pretty neat to look to your left and look to your right and see the best runners men and women in the world and to stand next to them is probably the most proud feeling is hey Timmy Olsen hey Julian Shore yeah yeah, yeah. how you doing honestly more yeah that's more that's more the proud feeling than the you know the the, ooh, I'm on stage. Yeah, all the, these people like taking. I'm one of these guys. Up. Yeah, just like these are my peers, and that's something that you never, I would never thought I would experience that in my life. So I, that's what's cool about it. You're about. Oh, no, one minute late. So uh, <laughs> gotta go. <laughs>